Hey guys, welcome back to a new video, a new PCG video. In this video, I will be showing you all how you can make this procedural room using splines and PCG. It is easily editable. You can do a lot with these. As you can see, it follows your splines perfectly. It generates flows and can generate walls around them. So, yeah, hope you guys, we will be seeing how you can manually adjust pivots of objects to satisfy your PCG needs. Uh, we will be going through various methods of how you can add the flows, the walls, how you can offset everything. So it will be a fun tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and do leave a like and let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next. So let's dive right into the video. So let's begin. So these are some of the assets which I'll be using. I have a pack. You can use your own wall and floor. So this is the floor and probably I'll use this one. So right now the pivot is incorrectly placed. I'll teach you all how to fix that as well. So let's dive into the tutorial. Firstly, let's create a folder to organize our content browser. Name this procedural room. Okay, that up. Firstly, we want to create a blueprint class of type actor. I'll name this BP underscore proc underscore room. Next thing, I also want to create a PCG graph. You can create an empty graph. I'll name this the same. All right. Now, uh, let's open up our actor blueprint. So first thing I want to do is add a spline node and a PCG node. For the PCG node, I'll assign the graph which we just made. Now click on your spline node and select this end point and delete it. And from this point, you can right click and select spline generation panel. I'll choose a square and increase the length by a bit. So I know my uh, flows are 300 by 300. So probably something around 900 should be fine. All right. Next thing in your spline, you want to make sure it's a closed loop. As soon as you do it, you'll see this tangent coming out. So right click and point type, make it linear. And if you move it, you can see, okay, that's fine. All right, compile. Now let's place it in the level. That's fine. Okay, now next thing what I want to do is edit our PCG graph. So open that up and just dock it here. Okay, so first thing what we want to do is we'll work on the flows. So get spline data, the actor filter can be self since we have assigned this to the actor. Next thing I want to do is get the spline sampling. Over here, we need to change a few things. First thing, the dimension will be on interior. This is for the floors. Next thing, you want to tick unbounded. You will get this error, you can ignore it for now. And the interior sampling space. So, if you check on your floor, you see, I, you can see the approximate size, it's 300 by 300. 
So that will be your sampling space. So I'll write 300 over here. Let's debug this. And if you see, it gives you the points needed. Someone, all right. Now, next thing, uh, let's add a transform point node to it. And leave that as it is. And lastly, a static mesh point. Now, I'll assign the floor. And do a force region. And you can see it's coming, but it's not that nice. Now, this is where our pivot comes into play. You see, the pivot is very at the edge. It is good for some scenarios, but not ideal for this one. So, what I'll do is I'll duplicate this in the content browser and name it pivot correct. Drag this in. What you want to do is go into the modeling tool. And if you click on X form, you'll see this edit pivot option. Click on that. And all you want to do is have it center pivot and accept and now inside your PCG graph I'll select that instead. All right, much better. All right, so now what I'll do is remove the debug. Next thing, what we want to do is edit the walls. For that, uh, we will filter out each side, like all of the left walls, all of the bottom facing, all of the top, and all of the right. So, uh, get in your transform point node and duplicate this four times and connect your spline sampler to all of them and now for the first one uh, we will add an offset of let's say so now since our sampling space is 300 my offset will be half of it, so 150 and 150. For the second one, it will be same, but negative 150. We are offsetting it from the center, and for this one, we'll do the same, but on the Y, and make sure you add in both min and max, and last one, a negative. So, Let's debug these. If I press D and C, you can see you have all four sides of the mesh. So next thing what we want to do is filter out all of these which are in the center and just have the ones in the edge. Let's do that. That's actually pretty simple. I'll remove this debug. I'll add a difference node and connect these two. Now, if I debug this, you will see it's just everything on the left. And duplicate this. And in the second one, we want to do the opposite. So the first one will go on the difference and the second will go on the source. 
and if you debug both of these you see you have both the edges and you need to do the same for the bottom one and you'll get the other two source and difference and opposite for this so if i save and if i debug all of them you'll see i have all the edges with me now when if i increase this something like this it will always give me those edges so now let's spawn our walls so next thing you can just remove the debug add another transform points node and connect all of these difference nodes to them and add a static mesh spawner and for this mesh we are going to have the pivot problem again so as soon as I assign this you will see it's pivoted quite wrong we need it to be from the center so let's fix that I'll do the same thing I'll duplicate this get that over here let's go into our modeling panel and X form edit pivot so we need the same center oh, and we also need it to be in the bottom so next click bottom and you have that and yeah I'll just assign this instead of that wall and now you can see yeah this is better now we need to fix the rotation of these walls so let's see which walls they are first so to do that uh, you can just remove the static mesh spawner from here okay and if you see these walls they are right so they need not be rotated let's find the second one these are right as well how about this these ones need to be rotated so let's click on the transform points I connect this again and just minimize this a bit all right so click on your third transform points node and let's add a rotation of 90 and 90 and you can see that fixes this you need to do the same for the fourth one 90 and 90 now we have perfect okay i thought it's from the pcg but yeah so we have our room ready so it's now we can go ahead and I'll just delete these and edit it as we wish it will perfectly spawn these walls and dungeons around it and if you can I mean some problem just keep editing it it will fix it and delete points as well if you hold alt and drag it you can add points you can experiment a lot with this uh, next video we will see how we can add narrow passages probably some entry points but probably if two meshes are colliding we can see how we don't want this line there's a lot to go from here but yeah hope you guys enjoyed this video and do subscribe and leave a like and do let me know in the comments what you guys would like to 
see next also okay so one thing if they don't have collision you can work on that as well you all you need to do is i think the mesh itself doesn't have collision so that's the thing but yeah do let me know and yeah thanks a lot